Today we're talking about how to install plugins within Cakewalk by BandLab. So Cakewalk's plugins come in BST format and BST plugins can actually get installed in several different places on your computer depending on what they actually are. So they can come in BST version 2, version 3, they can also be 32-bit, they could be 64-bit, and these are all going to be different folders on your computer. So what we need to do is we need to make sure if we want to use all these formats or if we want to use specific formats that we allocate these folders inside the actual Cakewalk software to actually be searched. So then these plugins can be imported into the software. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to do all that. So if you guys want to learn that, stick around after this introduction. What's going on everybody? I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sourcer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about how to add plugins into Cakewalk by BandLab. So I've gotten a lot of questions about this for people who are new to Cakewalk about how to get your plugins into here because with VSTs, it's a little bit more complicated because you have a lot of different folder options on your computer. So we're gonna talk about that today. So my hope is that after you guys watch this video, you won't have any more issues with being able to find your plugins inside Cakewalk. They'll just be in there and you'll know what to do if they're not, all right? So before we get into this tutorial, I do wanna mention I have a playlist popping up in the top right corner now that is full of Cakewalk training videos from beginner to advanced. So if you guys wanna learn more about this DAW here, check out that playlist after this video. So let's get into it here. And let's talk about actually where we look at the VST folders. So in Cakewalk to access the VST folders, or at least to see which folders are being used, you need to go up to the edit tab here where my mouse is at in the top left, click that, go down to preferences. And then we wanna go down to where it says file and then VST settings, okay? So this says it manages VST effect and instrument plugins. So. Under VST Scan Pass, these are going to be all the folders on your computer that get scanned for your VST plugins. If you have a folder on your computer that has plugins in it that is not in here, all those plugins are going to be missed and they're not going to show up in Cakewalk. So for me, I am only scanning 64 bit plugins. So this is where it gets a little bit more computery, as I say here. And this is something I want to talk about. So I'm going to pull over my file explorer here. So if we look at our C drive here, we have program files and then we have program files x86. So x86 are your 32-bit files. And then your program files here are your 64-bit files. So today, most plugins if not all, pretty much all, at least new plugins are all 64 bit, okay? Now, if you have any old lingering plugins that they haven't done any updates to, they might be only 32 bit. And then you'd have to use the ones that are located in your 32 bit folders. Now, I don't have any 32 bit plugins, so I'm not actually using any 32 bit folders. So if I open up this 32 bit folder here though, for program files, let me show you a couple locations you can look at here. So if we scroll down here, so there's two locations you gotta be aware of. So Steinberg always shows up, and then underneath that you have VST plugins. So I actually have some VST plugins in here, but I have the 64-bit versions of them. So I don't have any reason to use the 32-bit, so I'm not actually looking for this folder in here, okay? And then also you wanna look at the one that's actually called VST. Where we got that at here? Don't know my alphabet. There we go, VST plugins. And then it looks like the only one I have in here is Arcade, which I also have a 64-bit version of because that's actually a newer plugin. So as you can see, I'm not using neither one of those folders in here because I personally only want the 64-bit versions. So this is gonna be up to you. So my recommendation though is to go only 64-bit. And if you are missing a plugin, 
then add these folders in. And then it's likely you're gonna see it and then you're gonna realize, hey, this plugin that I'm missing is actually only 32 bit, okay? So that's a little bit of some you know common things to think about when you are looking at your VST folders, all right? Cool, all right. So for your scan options here, I like to leave this on automatic background scan and then scan in the sandbox. These are actually the default uh, settings here. So if you got a new plugin and for some reason you installed it while you had Cakewalk open, you can hit the scan button from here. Now Cakewalk usually scans your new plugins every time you open Cakewalk. I'm just saying if you happen to install it while Cakewalk's open, you can come in here and hit the scan button. Okay, that's one way you can do it. And then under VST3 migration, this is something important here. Uh, I definitely recommend checking both of these boxes here, especially the hide related VST2 plugins, okay? So a lot of the newer plugins come in VST2 and three, and just three is a newer version. So what's the point of using two is what I say. So if it comes in both, Cakewalk's gonna hide the VST2 version, all right? so. Leave both of these checked. And you can also leave recycle plugin windows checked and everything else in here is good. So if you made any changes here, all you would do is hit apply and then hit close. And then at that point, you can either uh, close Cakewalk and reopen and it'll rescan, or you can hit the scan button that was in that window that we looked at. And then that's going to put all of your new plugins into Cakewalk. And then as you probably already know, or you may not know, all of your plugins are actually located over here. All right. So let me actually see if I can expand this here. Um, so we got our instrument ones here. And then we got our audio FX ones here. All right. So again, if you want to use any of these plugins, if you guys are new to Kegelock, you simply can just like drag them. So if I want to, I don't know, we'll just, drag one of these over here onto the channel strip and it drags it right onto there. And if you want to actually um, create a instrument one here, this one you have to kind of drag into open space over here. So if I want to create a new piano one here using, we'll do True Pianos Cakewalk, you drag it onto the open space here. Uh, default settings are usually good, hit okay. And then you got your new uh, piano virtual instrument track. And if you wanna see that piano, you hit this little icon here, click that, opens up the actual virtual instrument, all right? So that was a little just bonus tips in there for you. So I hope that answered all of your questions for how to get your plugins into Cakewalk along with a lot of extra info for you. If you guys have any further questions on this, definitely feel free to reach out to me or leave um, questions in a comment section below. I will definitely answer them for you. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I'll be making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I'll see you guys later and peace out.